There's an effort to save supervised drug consumption and treatment services in Ontario. It follows the government's decision to close 10 supervised consumption sites due to their proximity to schools and daycares. It comes on the heels of the Provincial Auditor General's report yesterday that said the government's opioid strategy is outdated and does not serve the needs of the public. The CBC's Megan Fitzpatrick is on the story and joins me live from the Ontario Legislature. So, Megan, who is involved with the fight to save consumption sites and what are they saying? Well, since the government announced this change in policy back in August, a number of advocates have come here to Queen's Park and held news conferences urging the government to keep these sites open. There are 10 that are slated to close by the end of March. Uh, thanks to legislation the government introduced, banning sites from operating within 200 meters of a school or daycare and banning the opening of any new sites. Today, we heard from a group called the Drug Strategy Network of Ontario, and they're taking a slightly different strategy here to try and pressure the government to change its mind. They're asking the Auditor General, who we heard from yesterday for her annual report, they want her to do a value for money audit on safe consumption sites. The group was saying and expressing confidence that an audit would show that these sites are a net benefit to Ontario taxpayers and that closing them down will mean higher costs for Ontario taxpayers, mostly to do with higher health costs. So the director of the group warning that closing these sites will mean an added burden on emergency rooms and hospitals because of people who then might be going there uh, for treatment for an overdose, might mean added burden on paramedic services, higher 911 calls, um, potentially an increased transmission of uh, HIV and hepatitis C because at some of these safe consumption sites, there's um, clean needles are uh, provided to, to the people that are using their drugs in these sites. We also heard at the news conference today from uh, someone who works at a safe consumption site in Guelph. And she talked about the services that the site provides, that it goes far beyond staff just monitoring and, and keeping people uh, safe when they're using their drugs uh, in the sites. There's much much more to it than that, including a welcoming and safe environment for them. This is what she said. The CTS is a place where people can come to feel safe and accepted. That is a huge step on the path to creating trusting relationships. For a lot of people, it's the first step to feeling safe enough to seek out health care. The CTS provides wraparound supports that are so meaningful to our community. Sometimes we start with wound care or by providing clean and dry clothes. We provide many supports to help people stay out of crisis. Everyone who comes in is welcomed with the same compassion, care, and respect. CTS workers are grieving every day, but we work hard to provide the most accessible supports possible. Some days feel even harder as many of our visitors tell us they are feeling hopeless knowing that soon these services will no longer be available. The speakers at the news conference warning they do think people will die from overdoses as a result of these sites closing down. Again, the government is uh, saying they're transitioning away from these uh, kinds of sites and instead they're going to fund what they call heart hubs, which will be focused on helping people with homelessness and, and addiction. Sylvia Jones, the health minister, saying these new hubs will offer those kinds of supports that uh, that woman was just talking about without the harm reduction services, though, uh, the government, um, again, directing these sites to close down by the end of March. They are eligible to apply to transition into one of these hubs. So where do things stand with this legislation? Well, it has moved very fast through the legislature. So the government introduced it uh, November 18th and they fast tracked it. So they invoked what's called time allocation to limit the number of hours of debate on the bill. They entirely skipped the committee hearing uh, portion of passing a bill. Um, so there were no witnesses uh, giving their views on, on the bill. Usually at committee, sometimes the members can make uh, recommendations for changes to it. That wasn't done. So the bill was fast tracked and it was passed on Monday. We heard from Green Party leader uh, Mike Schreiner at that news conference as well. Here's some of what he said about how the government has rushed this through. I just would really plead to the government to listen to the families and people being affected by this decision. Uh, listen to our community that are concerned about the health and safety of our neighbors and stop having either or discussions and let's start having both and discussions to provide the health care services people in our community desperately need. 
The Green Party are not the only one uh, ones uh, pushing the government to reverse course in question period today. Some NDP MPPs uh, asked Sylvia Jones to scrap this legislation and keep the sites open. She stuck by the policy. Here's some of what she said. We are listening to the parents, to the family members, to schools, to daycares, to early on centers Order. who know that it is inappropriate to have consumption and treatment sites to within 20 meters of a school or a daycare or an early on center. Those are the experts we're listening to, people who are living in the community, and we are listening and ensuring that our heart hub models are actually going to offer hope and a pathway out of addictions. And she misspoke there. She did mean 200 meters, not 20 meters. Um, so we'll see where things go, Andrew, with this request for an audit. The other effort that hap is happening today, I just got uh, a news release for from a couple of groups, uh, including uh, the Canadian Drug Policy Coalition, the Drug Strategy Network of Ontario, the HIV Legal Network, and the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario. They are asking Lieutenant Governor Edith Dumont not to sign the bill, which passed on Monday, uh, into law. Of course, for bills to become law, they have to get that signature from her um, so they can be signed into law. And they have sent a letter saying, we urge you as Lieutenant Governor to reserve royal assent on the bill, given the deadly consequences that this legislation would have on people in this province. So a couple of efforts here, Andrew, by these groups to try and keep these sites open. Megan, thank you. The CBC's Megan Fitzpatrick, live in Toronto.